Well, we're back at the asphalt sled, albeit one small piece at a time, just like the uh, Johnny Cash car song. But anyways, I'd say the suspension is a pretty important piece of this build, so that's really what we got to uh, concentrate on right now and try to get this finished. Now, like I've said, this is basically a stock cat suspension that we are trying to convert over to an asphalt suspension for the narrow, you know, 11 or 10 and a 5 eighths or whatever asphalt track. And that's kind of the nicest thing that's come together so far on the suspension is those rear either wheels. What we did is we took the basic, you know, your stock rear shaft here. You normally have two more wheels here on both sides. And we just using the two inner ones. But since we're just using two of them on the inside, we actually also sized them up. These are 8 inch diameter wheels and the larger diameter that you can go, the less rolling resistance you got and the faster you go. So yeah, that's like free speed. The one issue with going up a size on wheels though is that the wheels stick a lot further down past those rails. Actually you can see I measured it there. They're about one and a quarter inch down below the rails. Now on a normal sled where you're using this, you know, plastic slides on there, that's an issue because the wheels are too far away from the slides and your track starts doing the, you know, roller coaster there along the wheels and that's not good either. You want a straight shot all the way to the back. However, we're making our own suspension here, so we don't have to follow no rules. Well, I take that back. We do have to follow some rules. And uh, basically that rule is where we're going to have the front uh, set of either wheels. We've got all these extra ones that we're going to add along the way here. However, we do have a couple of stock mounting location here around the front suspension arm pivot. There's so much stuff going on here. It's really going to be tough to try and add anything extra, you know, right here. We can put them here, we can put them here, but this area is too busy. So we're going to put a couple of stock idler wheels right here. And those idler wheels actually stick up above the rails here about seven sixteenths of an inch so you know only that much compared to an inch and a quarter down at the back now I know we could try and find some fancy you know larger idler wheels but we're just using whatever we got laying around and they're the stock size so we don't need to really do anything crazy here we know where these set of wheels are and we know where those eight inch idler wheels are we just gotta connect the dots now the whole way down the line and have a nice flat contact surface for where each of the other wheels are set up and for this we're actually gonna have to break out and use the math see kids trigonometry is useful yeah but even if you were sleeping I'm sure Google's got your back on how to figure that out alright so what we did is we started off with what we knew the one and a quarter inches at the back nothing at the front distance overall so Katoa and bam we got some measurements on each spot where we you know we had a very scientific method of eyeballing the distances here that would work best and we have those you know factored in down here to the overall distance and the first row of either wheels is going to be 0.3 inches up over top of the rail well actually it won't be over top of the rail it'll be the distance in between the uh, top of the wheel here that goes the whole way back so we we'll actually have to add 7 sixteenths on to the front one here up go over and then up 0.3 for the first set of idler wheels now you gotta add even even more of the maths you know for the diameter of these wheels and the offset of you know the radius minus the you know 7 sixteenths you got here make sure to keep everything straight so even though we ran all these numbers the final check comes down to a straight edge I mean that's where the true testament comes in to make sure everything's hitting at the same time so after a brief break in uh, progress we're back at it I'm sure, like I've said before, one of the best ways to motivate a project off the workbench is to leave it on the workbench taking up space. That way you're forced to finish it to get it out of the way. 
and we're finally getting around to like you know double checking all the numbers and making some adjustments to get all these wheels lined up down here along the suspension and we've even got this thing you know an old square to really make sure that we keep everything aligned with the rails you want to keep all those wheels you know really in line here we don't want no parasitic losses from the wheels being out of alignment and as you can tell by this fine piece of precision equipment it's a homemade square I got out of the trash so it's got to be good well by golly it's starting to look like an asphalt suspension I'd say that would probably work now as usual as a projects coming together like this you end up finding problems and one of those problems is going to be the upper idler uh, wheels there we talked before about how maybe we were going to put some bearings directly on that shaft well unfortunately when the suspension compresses and goes all the way down to the bottom there if we put the wheels on the outside like we were going to they're going to interfere and we can't put the narrow ones here because they'll hit the uh, shock linkage so we're kind of stuck having to put those wheels probably somewhere on the top of that suspension arm now to get it up and over things and keep it out of the way of the bottom wheels now we were planning on using that cross member right there taking it out and replacing it with that cross shaft with the other wheels now what I end up doing is putting the front suspension arm back on because it's going to come really close down here to that cross shaft now luckily it looks like when you put this on here you should have just enough clearance at full bottom out to not hit those wheels being that this is an asphalt sled you normally shouldn't be riding on the bump stops too hard so I think we'll be alright a couple less holes to drill that's good because you know drill bits are a pain in the butt to keep sharpening so we'll take what we can get yeah that should work out just fine there with the front suspension arm and they don't hang below the rails a whole lot but it's enough to bridge the gap between the two and that's really all you need I mean your tracks gonna generally take the shortest route from wheel to wheel you may have a little bit of flex up in there I mean I don't think so much on asphalt but if you have your track tension set pretty well I mean you get a little bit of movement but it's not like it's going to be rolling up an inch in between the wheels and hitting and if you do you'll see the black marks on the rail and you'll know that you got to fix something that pretty much takes care of all the bottom idler wheels on this setup we got to put those ones on the top of the suspension arm and we got to figure out the shock setup which is what we got to tackle next I mean there's not a whole lot of clearance there between the the shock uh, struts or whatever there and these wheels but heck as long as there's clearance you're alright Clarence so here we are back topside with the shock now I'm sure some of you are probably gonna cringe but the top mount of the shock is too wide for what we got so we're just gonna throw it in the bandsaw and the grinder and make it fit now I don't want to know what this Fox shock cost new I know what it cost me used and we're gonna make it work see that didn't hurt I am sort of amazed at how well that shock fits in there I mean I know that's not the stock size but well would you look at that and we're giving it the highly technical you know operational test yeah I'd say it works fine that wasn't supposed to happen now on to the back section I think we gotta use this thing just for the cool factor I mean I've never had something so billet as this so we gotta use it and what I'm thinking is we're gonna have to mount it right up here in the center of that rear suspension arm and of course we've got these you know flat plates here that need to mount to something and all we've got is air I mean hot air gets a lot of politicians through but it ain't helping here so I think what we might do is get some scrap angle or plate or something and we're gonna end up welding it right onto the 
you know, suspension arm here, and that way we'll have two flat surfaces to mount this thing to. We'll leave it, you know, undrilled, and we'll uh, clamp this on here after we get that all set up, and then we'll make the uh, holes after we figure out how much height we need, and you know, suspension ge geometry and droop, and the track's gonna get looser, and yeah, whatever. We'll just limit the suspension travel and not worry about that. Because like they say, um, if you know what the rules are, you can break them. Now I know that this project has a long way to go yet, and the suspension is not even finished, but personally, I'm glad to see this suspension finally get together this much. I mean, you don't know how long this thing's been sitting around in the corner of the shop or on the workbench here, taking measurements, double-checking measurements, trying new ideas, checking the layout of things, and just not much progress has gotten done. So we're finally at the point now where it's, it's sort of coming together. I mean, I have a game plan for the shocks. Uh, we have a game plan now for that top, you know, roller there. We just got to do some more fab work, clean things up, change out the bearings, grease the bushings, and bam. Hopefully this suspension should be done. I mean, that's like an evening's worth of uh, just grinding through stuff, getting stuff done. Whereas actually laying these things out, all that, that's taking a long time, so... I mean, it doesn't look like much, which goes for pretty much everything I own, but I see this as a pretty big step towards actually getting that sled complete. So we just took some flat bar, welded up some mounts, and we're rolling. We kept it as low as profile as possible, just a little bit of clearance underneath the wheels there in the back suspension arm, so you don't have, you know, too high of a wrap coming around for the track. But you need just enough to keep it, you know, out of the components and stuff. So finally, after about two weeks, we have the workbench back. Maybe I can work on something else now. Well, it's no Wall Brothers suspension. But on the other hand, we didn't pay a Wall Brothers price either. So we're one step closer to the track, but we still got quite a ways to go. Next time we open up the box.